now have a 2008 Hughescraft Ocean Pro 220 that is an amazing looking boat. But however, this boat is a used boat and it looks really nice. But inside, there's a lot of wear and tear. We're gonna go over, we're gonna show you what this boat is down to the bones because it is a 2008 that has been used in the ocean. Let's go around and check out all the features on it. First two inch coupler at the tongue. And we have surge brakes on here. We have just a two speed jack or winch on the front here. Um, the reason this boat looks so good is it has a new vinyl wrap on it here. So the vinyl wrap looks really nice on it. Gives it a great appearance. These come new with a vinyl wrap. Uh, this is just one that the shop put on it to, to, with a different color combination that you normally get. Also too, this boat has bottom paint on it. So this boat can be moored. The bottom paint on here uh, goes all the way up here to the line. And so when you're mooring this boat, then it won't grow stuff on it as, as easily. So you won't have as much growth on the bottom of it, but that goes up on the long side. So we did the black vinyl to match that black bottom paint, uh, just to make it look a little bit more con consistent on the bottom there. And so we've got new Hughes Craft graphics on it here as well. Looks sharp. And uh, the, overall, the overall boat, look of the boat and stuff like that, looks pretty darn good. Uh, new tires and wheels on the trailer here. So those are all brand new. It's got oil bath hubs on it. We'll go look through those. Um, going around the back here, it has trim tabs, uh, new lights on the back here, and then an offshore bracket here with a uh, 99 high thrust Suzuki and a uh, Suzuki 150. This is a 150. So a lot of people are gonna be like, hey man, that thing is way underpowered. We're gonna show you what it can do today because it's actually kind of surprising. The power the Suzuki puts out with this particular hull uh, seems to do pretty well. So we've got the offshore bracket here. Uh, anode's in good shape. Uh, step ladder here. You don't really need it when you're off the boat because you can just step on there. So you're pretty good that way. Good there. It does have a couple of older Scotty downriggers. Uh, we'll see if they even work on those. And then after that um, again oil bath hubs here on each on each axle uh, those are nice because they keep that they keep that thing lubricated and, and they do seem to do pretty well this boat does have a, a Lawrence radar on it and a, a Lawrence uh, 9 inch or 12 inch screen and we shall go in there a little bow uh, or a, uh, a Dirk's anchor guide on the front there's a couple little dings. You can see a couple dings and dents in here just from dock and stuff. It's just getting the light right on them. You can see them. Slight bow here. For the most part, this side is really straight here. On the other side, we have one ding I can show you. Uh, it doesn't show up really good, but if you look closely here, you can see it at just an angle. Um, it's about this big. Here's my hand. My hand will cover it all the way, but there's a little ding in here. Um, where it's indented there so you can kind of see that if you get the right angle on it with the lighting but once you stand back a little bit it's pretty much gone uh, one small small ding finger finger size right there in the back under the vinyl there uh, a couple places that you can see where the paint on the house has got some uh, build especially around any dissimilar metals like screws or anything like that you can see a little bubbling on the paint here and stuff right there so so take note of that uh, we'll get the close-ups and stuff because I want you to be completely confident in what you're looking at here and nothing hidden or something that you, you don't know about. All right, let's hop up in the boat and we'll take a look there. One thing that's really pretty cool on this boat is they put down the aluminum decks. The aluminum decks here are great because that wood and the stuff they had in those be uh, now, it's, it's not near as good. It won't hold up as well as these aluminum uh, diamond plated floors. So that's really good. Uh, let's take a look here in the battery compartment here. So pulling this panel out, you can see what we've got here. So we've got one battery here on this side and then I believe we have one on the other side too with a battery switch right here for accessing that. We've got a fuel water separator accessible there. And we'll put 
this cover back on. And if you see anything in this video and you're like, huh, I need to look into that, I'd like to look into that a little bit further, um, always give us a call and ask us uh, for a, a more up close video or pictures, uh, high resolution pictures. Sure, sometimes the video isn't as high a quality resolution. Okay, and then here's the other side we've got here. And we can pull this out too. So you get a good look inside there. Okay, down the bilge and stuff. Let's get the bilge pumps. We got our uh, wash down deck, uh, wash down pump and battery number two over on this side. Uh, batteries are 2016. 2016 is the year on the batteries. And got a panel back in. Those. Okay. Just looking around, you can see some more paint bubble here inside. You can see where the paint's kind of coming off here, here and here, anywhere you got screws kind of things. That's what's going to happen with any boat in salt water. So um, you can pay a lot less for one that already has it, I guess, because your new one's going to get it on there anyways. And then we've got the, the big fish tank. This is really big on here for the fish tank. Okay, we've got that. All right, uh, in-floor fish hold here probably got water in it because I saw the valve was closed which it does so we had to turn that valve and we can drain that all right let's go inside the cabin so this does have a full bulkhead so it is enclosed lockable so you can shut the door and keep it shut uh, really nice when you have a boat moored because you can lock the cabin and keep all your gear in it you don't have to worry about people climbing in and stealing it all right this one also too has the auxiliary uh, the auxiliary cover so you can put a porta potty underneath the seat here and then put the curtain around it so you actually have a little enclosed uh, restroom area there and so it's got that suspension seats on both front helm seats front and helm seat uh, wipers on the front windows there and then this is an HDS 10 is what this uh, screen is here is HDS 10 by Lawrence we got a unit in uh, unit in VHF there uh, uh, Suzuki side controls here so uh, you've got that trim tab controls here uh, the motor has like 597 hours on it I believe we have a uh, engine scan off of it with the with the uh, software with the computer so, so we have an engine scan of that so it's just about 500 and something hours uh, almost 600 hours on the engine and let's see here um, some lighting up top here switches back here I don't even know if the battery's up on the house, so we might have to turn those on. Um, nav lights, so those are on the bilge. Here the bilge pump going. We got wiper one and wiper two. Uh, accessory. And I don't know what that went to, but horn. Live well. I don't believe this has a live well on it. So a lot of these switch panels, they have all the stuff on them and they're even labeled, but they don't have it. It's kind of a funny thing that they've done from the factory. Plenty of new boats, we do the same thing. <laughs> Doesn't have this option, but I don't believe this has a live well on it. So we've got our suspension seats. This is cool because the seat right here, this back will come off and there's two bars right here that sit across and you can uh, fill these in to make a, a cross the way bed right here. So if you want to stay over in the boat, out on there where you've got a spot right here you can climb in the bed uh, right here and get out the front or the back either side oh let's go out the front since we have this awesome big window it's one of the best things about these is this window here so we have the ability to climb right out the front here and we got full access to the bow these big rails and stuff and you can even fish off the front here uh, do some jigging off the bow stuff you can see some more uh stuff from the window here there's some some of that paint flaking here from condensation probably rubbing on that or sitting around that window uh, it'll probably be pretty common um, top of the boat looks really good up above looks really nice come back in here okay Fire off that radar, start up. I don't even remember how 
to do this, I'm going to have to play with it for a minute to get it all down. Transmit. Okay, hear the radar, there it goes. The radar's working there. You can hear it humming up above. Very good. I'm going to play with that a little bit more when we get out on the water. So, let's go launch this and put it on the water. Lots of storage, too, everywhere. Storage, storage everywhere in the sea. It's got all over the place. Store stuff. These are cool, too. I like this. This is locks. Um, if you remember how it goes, there's a little button up here. I'll release that, that door and latch it. But it's got the little cabinets on the sides here. So, lots of storage everywhere. Steered tackle gear in there. Both sides there, same thing. So you've got that going on, some grab handles here, hanging on, getting up rod storage up on top and stuff. And then it has the rails to hold. So see, I can walk around the boat here while I've got the handhold on the top of the cabin here. Still have that, so it makes it easy to walk. Good wide gunwales on these. Lots of room. Okay. We go. Let's go put this boat on the water and see what it does. Okay, here we go. Got a radar going. We need to zoom out a little bit. Let's see here. Can do that. Oh, zoom out. Zoom in. Eighth mile. This should show everything pretty close to us. Yeah, now we're working it. Now we can see the stuff. There's the buoy right here. That's that buoy right there. Okay. So yeah, good working radar. I'm gonna trim our motor all the way down until we hear it. The main motor there is going down. There we go. You hear that? All right. Let's add a little throttle here. There. Okay, first things first, nice place to put your feet underneath there. And uh, all in all, I mean, we've ran these. Oh, check it out. There's a chopper hanging over us. That's the helicopter. That's the Coast Guard right there. It's not very far away, if you could see it from here. It's close. It looks further than the camera. And we're on a lake. Okay, we're going to give this thing a good test down, make sure everything's good on here go from there. So we're going to start off uh, to do a 180 here and then we'll start adding some throttle to it and see how it likes it. Just going at normal speed right here. I won't use the trim tabs and stuff at first here. We'll let it actually just ride uh, just without the trim. Uh, which seems about level with that kicker on the opposite side of me. And that works out pretty good. Okay. Adding a little more throttle, bring it up to about 3,600 RPM, 38. Looks like she's pulling a plane. Oh, that's how you do it right there. Plus sonar, radar, and 
so smooth. Look, seriously, not touching any of the controls. That's your run out of there. It likes it. It likes it. 5,600 RPMs, 29 miles an hour. I'll bet you we got a lot more throttle here. Okay, that's 59. Brings us up to 30 miles, a little over 30 miles an hour. And I'll go ahead and trim it up. Trim it up a little more. Now remember, we don't have much weight in the boat. It's just me. No tackle or gear. Doing 30, no problem. It's still at 5,900 RPMs there. So we're good. I'm add a little bit more throttle. So now, radar. six so so I think we need to bring this prop actually we'll throw a 17 pitch on it or something because it sounds like it's full wrapped out and it's still got plenty more to go it's got a lot more power so I think this boat right now we're at 32 miles an hour that whistle Give it a quick rundown. Uh, acceleration. We're going to take off here. Okay. About five seconds to plane with that 150. Not too bad at all. Of course, we have a. Remember, we have a prop that's not quite prop to things, but you know, at least you're going to get. A lot of power and 35 mile, 34 miles an hour out of the boat because that's what I was able to hit before I got to the too high of RPMs. So that prop on there is is great if you wanted to haul a lot of weight. It'll do it, and that should be able to hold that weight. But it gives you a whole shot like no other. Now we're gonna go out here and run over our wake. I did it once before the camera was off. I was actually really impressed, so I wanted to give you a show of that here. So we're gonna go ahead and take off. So we're dead, dead, uh, well, we're in gears. We'll go to neutral, and then we'll even back down a little bit. Back down on it, there we go. Okay, now we're not moving. Now I'm gonna put it into gear, and let's see if you can see it here. Here we go. Oh, trim all the way down. Okay, wheel straight, and go. Okay, we 
30, 31, 32. There we go, 32 in that much time. So you can tell on your little thingy on the bottom of the video how many seconds that was. But it likes to hop up and go with that 150. And think about this, you can drop this thing down. Most of the time in the ocean, you're really restricted to about 22, 24 knots. Uh, miles an hour so this one we're going to drop it down to about 26 25 there you go right about there 25 add a little throttle more Bring up the trim there we go and that little motor is just barely working you can do that all day think of the fuel economy of this boat you could run out you could run out a long time with that that'd give you quite the range go ahead and put her into a turn and then we're going to go ahead and run over our own wake here we're banking hard yeah i don't feel i don't feel sketched at all with this boat in a full bank doing 22 miles an hour into a bank now I'm gonna wrap it out we're gonna lay it right over the top of those our old wake here here we go yeah nice and soft not real tinny not that vibration noise when you hit the wakes it was solid obviously the suspension seat here soaked up most of it for me so I wasn't really feeling it but overall really soft going through our own wake uh, so uh, Overall, yeah, they are good, good, well-engineered boats, um, built solid, heavy gauge aluminum, easy to drive. This thing is so comfortable. I mean, we're just doing a 25 knot cruise or mile an hour cruise right now, and I don't even have to be at the helm or anything. This thing holds a straight line perfectly. So it's really easy. I'm inside the cabin, so I don't feel any wind or anything like that basically just like if I were in a car right now out on the ocean. So foul weather, who cares, no problem. If you want the rush, open up the front window and you can get all the wind you want. But uh, out back, probably well protected too with that house in front of it. But that's, that's one of my favorite things about a solid cabin like this, a big cabin like this, is you get really a all year long boat. So you don't need to put it away all winter. Uh, you can you can bust it out and, and go and run in some some warm climate. You can always put a little heater, but Mr. Mr. Heater in here, something like that, to toast it up a little bit. But you still just get the heat from the windows and stuff. It really helps out a ton that way. Uh, just getting a little bit of sun through the windows. But all in all, super easy boat to run. Rides nice and soft. Moves up. It's going to be super fuel efficient. Uh, so have a really good range. Uh, we'll go to test that kicker motor right now. I guess we need to make sure everything's working there. I uh, will go there and get that checked out. Go from there. Uh, we can run our trim tabs. See how those do. So I know all the way down we're up. So I'm going to set this bow down a little bit. So you get a big person on one side. Say for example, that side's down a little bit right now. So I'm going to go ahead and lift it up. Oh, I did the opposite side. Um, Lift the other side up. There we go. Tilts the boat, leveled it us right out. So now we're perfectly level with those trim tabs down. Um, so you don't have to ask people to move side to side. Uh, if you need more hole shot, a little extra planing gives you a little efficiency having those tabs down. And then we can just run them all the way back up. And we have no tabs. Just hold them down until they stop. And then you're done. Pretty, pretty all around road. Let's go check out that kicker motor, the 15 horse or 10 horse, 99. Now we'll go see how that starts up. It has not been started yet, so let's go ahead and just run and start that real quick. Still got plenty of speed, but it should be fine going down. Now I did not pump the bulb. I will, I'll go ahead and choke it. Um, make sure we're in our starting position here. Make sure it's in neutral. And there it goes. Look at that. I just choked it. I didn't even pump the bulb because the bulb's inside, which is nice to have that. It does have a link from here to there, a connecting bar, so you can steer it from inside once you get it running. 
let that warm up a little bit. It might have a hard time going into gear. It's a little cold. Chokes all the way off. There we go. Moving us right along. Nice, quiet, and easy. Five miles an hour off the graph there. Let's crank it up and see what it can do. Check out what we're doing. Six miles an hour. 6.3. Bring that 9-9.